So I wanted to create a comprehensive video on kidney stones. So I have a lot of videos out there right now on kidney stones, but they're just focused on one aspect of kidney stones. So this video is the more of the comprehensive uh, version. One out of 10 people will get kidney stones. And out of all the people that get kidney stones, 50% of them will get reoccurrence of kidney stones. So it is a big deal. And if you're a stone former, you need to know about this video right here. Okay, the first thing you need to know is something called supersaturation. When the concentration of fluid in your kidney becomes too concentrated, that's when the stones form. And this video is mainly on the most common stones that form called the calcium oxalate stones, okay? So one way to prevent this supersaturation is to drink enough fluid, okay? So two to 2.5, up to three liters of fluid each day of fluid. That will prevent any stones from forming right there. And of course, if you're gonna do that much fluid, I recommend also adding electrolytes in there, uh, especially uh, potassium citrate. More fluid will prevent the, even the formation of these stones. Um, oxalates, okay, what are oxalates? Well, oxalates are a byproduct of your metabolism. Your body makes oxalates. Oxalates are also in your foods. They're mainly in plant foods, and then when they combine with calcium, uh, they form a crystal, and they start developing a kidney stone. There are some people that are sensitive to oxalates, and they can experience a lot of pain and inflammation if they consume foods high in oxalates. And you also only absorb a certain amount of oxalates from the food, about 10%. If you're a stone former, you're gonna absorb a little bit more than that. Now, what can you do to reduce oxalates? Okay, there's, there's a couple things. One would be to start cutting down the foods that are high in oxalates, okay? And it just so happens, these foods are usually eaten in larger amounts when you're on the ketogenic diet. Almonds and almond flour, spinach, and chocolate. Now, I put a link down below to give you a little more data on oxalates so you can actually see the list of foods from high to low. Uh, for example, almonds are at the top of the list. At the bottom of the list are pistachios. All right, so now you can reduce the foods that have oxalates, but what are some other ways to reduce the oxalates? Okay, number three, calcium. Now you would think if you consume more calcium, you're gonna get more kidney stones, but that's not how it works. Because when you consume foods high in calcium, as in dairy, I'm talking about cheese, and I recommend like goat's cheese or sheep cheese, which is a lot better than cow's milk cheese, that calcium will bind with the oxalates and the other foods that you're eating at the same time, okay, they'll bind in the digestive system. So there's less oxalates to be absorbed in through the blood and filtered through the kidney. So if you're consuming foods that have oxalates, which a lot of people do, uh, if you add a little cheese, that will protect yourself. Probably why certain cultures will add cheese when they cook spinach. So the calcium will bind with the oxalates and there'll be less oxalates that end up in the kidney. If you have what's called fat malabsorption, let's say for example, you have irritable bowel syndrome, or you don't have a gallbladder, or you're deficient in bile, or you have damage in your pancreas, or some type of damage in your colon where you can't absorb fats that well, okay? And the fats go through you. That excess fat can also bind with the calcium, which can leave more oxalates to get absorbed into your blood and to the kidney. So people that have this condition should actually consume a little more calcium because the fat can actually increase more oxalates in the kidney for this reason. But mainly if you have a malabsorption problem, not in general. It's just a little side note. Okay, another way to decrease the oxalates, add citrates. When someone is a stone former, they're usually deficient in citrates. So you can add lemon or lime juice, okay? Citrate combines with the oxalates and inhibits and binds up the oxalates so it becomes less of a problem for you. You can also do minerals like in potassium citrate, magnesium citrate, or even calcium citrate, okay? That will also help. Number five, uric acid. Now, I'm mainly focusing on the oxalate stones, but there is also a situation when you can have uric acid stones. Um, and this is dependent on your pH. If your pH is too acidic, and I'm talking like five, 
okay, instead of 6, the optimum pH would be 6, okay? If it becomes too acidic, that's when the uric acid uh, stones can form. And this is another reason to consume enough vegetables to keep your pH in the correct place so it's not too acidic. When you're on the ketogenic diet, okay, you're having all these ketones going through your body, they're acidic, and you're not consuming enough vegetables, and you're a stone former, you can end up with a bit too much uric acid. You can even get some gout symptoms because when you do keto, a lot of times people will do intermittent fasting. And intermittent fasting will spike uric acid because one of the purposes of uric acid is to act like an antioxidant. So your body is trying to clean up uh, microbes um, related to autophagy. And if you don't know what that is, I put a video down below. Watch that. It's very fascinating. But the way to counter this uric acid is just to uh, raise the pH a little bit, uh, acidify it. With, and you can do it with potassium citrate, okay? And of course with vegetables. So potassium citrate will kill two birds with one stone. It'll actually help lock up the oxalates if there is any there and also reduce the uh, uric acid. All right, next one, flora. There's a microbe called oxalobacter formagens, okay? And this microbe uses oxalates as its food, okay? It lives on oxalates. It will degrade and break down up to 95% of the oxalates. And so if you had a history of taking antibiotics or you have some colon damage, or you had some surgery to your colon where you had part of it removed, that can increase your susceptibility to getting stones. So it's not a bad idea to take a probiotic, uh, something like lactobacillus or bifidobacteria and some other microbes. Right now, they're doing experiments on this microbe, but you can't get it um, unless you're enrolled in the trial that they're doing. Uh, maybe eventually it'll come out with this microbe, but I think what happens in a lot of cases is that when people get antibiotics, it destroys this microbe, and they just have higher levels of oxalates. So having the right amount of bacteria is very, very important. In fact, having other microbes as well, like the lactobacillus, um, can reduce your oxalates by between 40 and 60%. Okay, magnesium also can help reduce the calcium buildup in the kidney as well. So that's another mineral. You get magnesium from leafy greens right there. Vitamin D. Now, one complication for vitamin D is hypercalcemia. Okay, that's too much calcium in the blood, which potentially, but this is rare, could lead to a kidney stone. And that's really the only danger of having high levels of vitamin D. If you're a kidney stone former, you just have to be aware of this potential situation, if you're taking high levels of vitamin D, and I'm talking about like 50,000 or 80,000 IUs, um, you probably would want to drink a lot of water and just make sure you're not consuming too much calcium, okay? So that's just one little side note. It would be rare to have this happen, but I just, I'm bringing up as one, one point. Okay, so salt. Now here's the thing with uh, salt, especially sodium. Uh, if you have excessive, excessive amounts of sodium, that can actually cause more um, calcium to leave the body, to go through the kidney. In this situation, if you're a stone former, I would recommend to stick with something like 2,300 milligrams, which is one teaspoon, and not go crazy with maybe like two or three or four teaspoons, because potentially that could be an issue. And lastly, vitamin K2, which counters uh, calcification of the body. It counters um, calcium being in the wrong place in the soft tissues, not just in the kidney, but in the joints and the arteries. So vitamin K2 is also a, a valid thing to take in this approach. So in summary, okay, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, more fluids, avoid the foods high in oxalates, add a little cheese when you're eating, uh, I recommend sheep cheese or goat's cheese. Um, calcium citrate as a, uh, a good electrolyte that will actually help uh, both of these conditions, oxalates and uric acid. Uh, lemon juice with your water would be a good thing to do. 
make sure you have a good probiotic, magnesium. But if you're consuming enough vegetables, you get the potassium and the magnesium. Just try not to go too crazy with the vitamin D. If you, want to, if you have a stone or you're trying to prevent a stone and you're a stone former, the regular amount of salt that you need and K2. All right, thanks for watching. So if you're enjoying this content, go ahead and share it with someone that could really benefit from it.